to honor the great Prince Simon. Neil! I said Neil! Stop! Why do you not kneel? I kneel before my king. I abase myself only before the god of my fathers. What's his name, this god? The great I am. The one true god. The maker of heaven and earth. The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. A Jew. Mordecai ben Yair. Mordecai. I shall name my prize pig after you. Perhaps I may give you other reasons to remember my name. You will remember mine. For this! <laughs> What good did that do? You still ended up on the ground like the rest of us. But I did not kneel.
and these shields, boys! <laughs> Remember this day, man. For it will be yours for all time. As your queen, I come to you as a mother. I come to you as a wife. I come to you as a Spartan woman. I come to you with great humility. I am not here to represent Leonidas. His actions speak louder than my words ever could. I am here for all those voices which cannot be heard. Mothers, daughters, fathers, sons. 300 families that bleed for our rights and for the very principles this room was built upon. We are at war, gentlemen. We must send the entire Spartan army to aid our king in the preservation of not just ourselves, but of our children. Send the army for the preservation of liberty. Send it for justice. Send it for law and order. Send it for reason, but most importantly, send our army for hope. Hope that a king and his men have not been wasted to the pages of history. That their courage bonds us together. That we are made stronger by their actions. And that your choices today reflect their bravery. Look at their excuse for a navy. Their ships are of little threat, and whoever proves their excellence will earn a place beside me. General Bandari has offered to lead the first attack. Bandari! Commander. If I let you lead our first offensive, what guarantee do I have that you'll bring me a quick victory? My word and my life. Good. My rules of engagement. Humiliate the Greeks and lay waste to their tiny ships. They'll be dead to the last man. Make sure Mordecai's name is entered in the Chronicles. Then I will certify it with my seal so he may be properly rewarded by the king. Give our attention to Brother Mac as he helps us to appreciate into the new world under Christ's leadership. You know, in spite of how you feel this morning, probably a little tired, a little apprehensive, raggies because of this life that we live in, a little uncertain of how things are going to be for you in the future, you probably don't realize how fortunate we are. You see, those of us that are putting forth the effort to be followers of Christ, we're actually the most privileged people on the face of the earth. You see, our leader is perfect. Our leader is not a human. 
Our leader is not someone that has shown his ineptitude of trying to guide people. For example, if you look on the world scene today, how about the disaster that took place there in Myanmar, that side call? You notice how the government and military leaders showed their ineptitude. When people were trying to help and assist to bring aid there, they were blocking it. What a terrible leadership. But before we chastise them too much, what happened just, just three years ago, right here in the United States with Hurricane Katrina? The same type of assistance and aid, it was not forthcoming. What a tragedy when it comes to leadership. You know that 75% of people who have been polled, here's what they said. We have a leadership crisis worldwide today. Look at some of these major companies. You know the company AIG, they lost $7.8 billion in a short period of time. That was bad leadership, bad investments. Companies like Enron, WorldCom, and others. What do you think about the price of oil? Because of leadership. Well, how about the decreasing values in the currency and the money that we try to use worldwide? It's a result of the leadership. Aren't we all in agreement with the statement that's made in the Bible in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10? Let's all turn that together. Here in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, here's what the prophet tells us that happening. We can all probably be in agreement with this statement. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we want to look together at verse 23. And though we may be familiar with this verse, there is one word we want to make sure we understand. And Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 23, here's what the Bible tells us. I well know, O Jehovah, that to earthling man his way does not belong. It does not belong to man who is walking, even to direct his death. So the Bible tells us that man does not really have the ability to take one step on his own. So are we happy then that as Christians our leader is not a human. Our leader is not a man. Man was not designed to rule, to guide, or to direct other men. And that's why it's always a beauty when man is put in that place. So as Christians, we echo the statement that Jesus left here on the earth for all of his followers. Look at this statement in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 10. Now here's the statement that we're all happy about. And why we said at the outset of our discussion, we are really some of the most blessed people on the face of this earth. And Matthew chapter 23, look at what, what verse 10 tells us. Neither be called leaders, for your leader is one, the Christ. So what about that today? Although others look to humans as leaders, the Bible says that our leader is one, and that is the Christ. And we can be guided, we can be led right into a new world order without all of these tragedies and trials and tribulations in which we have to undergo. But until that time, it's good for all of us to make sure that we view Christ as our leader. You see, if you're not careful, unless you put forth deliberate effort, someone will make a disciple out of you, and it won't be Jesus. It could be someone in your family, Someone who lives down the street from you? Maybe someone who's prominent and famous? They can actually start to lead you with the God. And yet the Bible told us as Christians, your leader is one. And that is the Christ. In fact, the Bible prophesied that Jesus would be the leader. So the Bible says, until Allah, until Messiah, the leader comes. So it was pointed to that mankind would have an adequate leader. That is Jesus. 
And for all of us that are hungry and thirsty for spiritual food, for the proper direction, isn't that what you really want is proper leadership? Isn't that what we want is just proper direction? Well, for those that are really thirsty for proper, kind guidance, the Bible prophesied that it would take place. In Isaiah chapter 55, let's turn there and see what the prophet had to say. Uh, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, and we want to read together verse 1 and verse 2, and then we'll read one of the ensuing verses. In Isaiah ch chapter 55, look at verse 1. This is an invitation, really, to, to all of us. Hey there, all you thirsty ones. Come to the water. And the ones that have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, even without money and without a price. Isn't that good news? We don't have to pay for it. Most of us are broke already. So if there was something good, we couldn't get it. But the Bible says, hey there, stop right there. All of you thirsty ones, all of you who want good leadership, you want spiritual direction. The Bible says you can come. You get many good things without money. So right away we say thank God for that. What leader's going to tell you that? We can't even get gasoline to go to work. We take care of our family now. We can't even get rice. Essential for our children. But the Bible said, no, there's good news here. Look at what else the Bible says. Look at verse 2. Why do you people keep paying out money for what is not bread? And why is your toil for what results in no satisfaction? Listen intently to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul find its exquisite delight in fatness itself. So there are good things there from us. Joel is telling us it exists. The proper leadership does exist. And if we can look at verse 4 together. Look, as a witness to the national groups, I have given him as a leader and commander to the national group. So it's not just one nation, not just one race. Jehovah God is dealing with all of mankind. And he says, I've already given it as a leader. So good leadership can be found. Christ Jesus is our leader. Now there's something we want to make sure that we understand about this. Look at the book of Exodus chapter 23. Let's all turn there together. In the book of Exodus chapter 23, and we want to read together, starting with verse 20. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. This is a precedent that was set for Jehovah God having a leader for mankind. Exodus chapter 20, I mean chapter 23 rather, and starting with verse 20. Here I am sending an angel ahead of you to keep you on the road and to bring you into the place that I have prepared. Watch yourself because of him and obey his voice. Do not behave rebelliously against him, for he will not pardon your transgression because my name is within him. However, if you strictly obey his voice and really do all that I shall speak, then I shall certainly be hostile to your enemies and harass those harassing you. For my angel will go ahead of you, and will indeed bring you to the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I shall certainly face them. We can add more names there. Do you understand what Jehovah was telling his people? He said, I'm going to put an angel ahead of you. He's going to lead you, he's going to guide you, he's going to direct you to the place that I have prepared. Who was that angel? Well, through Bible study, we learned that that was probably Jesus Christ in his pre-human existence. If Jesus Christ could lead mankind at that time, can he lead us today? But the requirements were they needed to obey that angel. They needed to walk in Jehovah's way. They needed to accept him. Yes, you're allowing this angel to lead us. As your people. Well, it's the same thing today. But here's a question. Isn't it true that certain things 
can exist, but it's not real to us? Now, it's real. It, it's a reality. But because of our lack of appreciation, it's just not real to us. So that brings up a question. Is Christ's leadership real to you? It does exist. But do you view Jesus as a leader? Someone that could guide you. Someone that should direct you in the way in which we should walk. Or do you have your own agenda? Do you want to lead yourself? Or do you want someone else to lead you? And by the way, that's so easy to do. You know, one woman spent about $55,000 to buy a pair of blue jeans. Because Marilyn Monroe was born. Oh, yes, it happens. What would you pay for if you don't get tell on that shit? <laughs>
want anyone to go into the name of Christian as long as it doesn't cause a disruption in the things they want to do or in their lifestyle. But if we're going to go into the new world under Christ's leadership, then we follow Christ. We want his leadership to be real to us right now. Look at uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Let's read some of the words of the Master. Here in Matthew, chapter 28, this is what Jesus had to say. Matthew chapter 28. And we want to look at verse 19 and 20. See if you know this active leadership in this time period in which we live. Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus is speaking. He said, Go therefore and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And look, I am with you all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. Does that tell you that Christ is an active leader? He's talking to his disciples. He says, go and make more disciples. Not only that, he says, I'm going to be with you. So the Bible tells us of this active leadership today. Let's turn back to Matthew chapter 18. Here in the Bible, Matthew chapter 18, you know what the Bible tells us about Jesus and his leadership. Okay, Matthew chapter 18, and we want to read verse 20. Jesus is telling his followers, For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in your midst. How many really believe that? How many really believe that Jesus is in our midst? That means that congregation meetings demonstrate Christ's active leadership. Now, many would say, well, if I knew Jesus was there, I'd go to every meeting. Well, he's with us at every meeting. Where are you at sometimes? Do you recognize that our leader is not here? He recognizes all that's going on. Do you realize that Jesus directs and controls every Christian congregation on this earth? Now, we need to stop and think about that. Is that something that you really appreciate? That Jesus is in control of every Christian congregation on this earth. The Bible says that he has the stars in his right hand. His right hand of power. Do you believe that? We ask that question because those that have a quest for Christian living, you have to deal with imperfect people. So that means things are going to take place that are going to disappoint you. It's not going to exactly happen the way you would like for it to happen. In fact, even those taking the lead in the congregation may not always handle things properly. Is that all you see is men? Or do you see Christ's leadership? If you see it happening in the congregation, that means who else sees it? That means your home and Jesus see it. If they can live with it, why can't you? Have you already assumed that Christ is no longer active? And well, I just need to leave and go to another congregation. Well, our leader is one. The crowd. Can you just sit there and say, well, Christ, I know you see me. And you're our leader. And so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with you. Do we really view Christ's leadership as real? Well, how do we demonstrate? How do we show that we believe? And that's an appropriate question because many people hear about Christ, but they don't always accept it. Do you know that people will go under the guise of Christianity, but really they're not a disciple of Christ? How do you re react to racial relations? You ever heard a person make disparaging comments about some of another race? You better be careful. That's not Christ's leadership. Some individuals will automatically think, well, I've been mistreated, and uh, so uh, things that have happened that were not justified to me, so that gives me license to act a certain way. That's not Christ's leadership. You need to wake up and be real. What you're talking about is going to happen in the new world order. That's the only time you're going to get true justice, so the only way you're going to get there, you have to follow the leadership of Christ. you got to get back in line. People will yell from the hostile. I've been mistreated. They did me wrong. Well, get in line. Everybody else has been mistreated. <laughs> That's the way to sit down and follow Christ's 
leadership. <laughs> is his leadership real to you? Now, we can go into the guise of Christianity and pretend that we're Christ followers till we get hot and bothered if something goes wrong. Well, we're going to get in that new world. Into the new world. Get some of the active leadership of Christ. So maybe some of you here are just Bible students. Do you feel Christ's leadership, or are you following man, just trying to find a good religion? There's something that's going to give you stability in your life. That's why some never come in. You know, pregnancy is one of the most terrible times for women. You notice how many times women study the Bible when they're pregnant? And all of them have that baby. We can't find them then, can we? Well, are you studying the Bible? Are you a Bible student? Are you postponing decisions to take decisive action and follow the Christ? Or are you looking for some other agenda that's going to be more convenient for what you want to do? Well, how about uh, the young ones here? You keep hearing your parents and they've been serving God for many, many years. But as a young one who's been uh, exposed to Christianity, to the truth that's found in God's Word, the Bible, have you made your own decision to follow Christ? Or are you waiting to follow somebody else? Because remember now, somebody will make a disciple out of you. Are you willing to follow a perfect me? Or you want to follow someone else because they're famous, or someone else is telling them, well, this is the way to go. Well, something to think about. And those of us who are baptized, we've made a dedication to God. Well, only way we really serve God, we have to follow Christ. And sometimes we forget that. We say, well, I know God, I know Jehovah, but do we manifest in our daily life that in our decisions that we make, that we have accepted Jesus as our leader? Are we demonstrating that in our life? Something else we might want to consider. Are we actually on the move toward the new world order under the leadership of Christ? Can we really feel ourselves moving that way? Or do we just kind of, do we feel lost? Just realistically, uh, do we feel lost about our lives? And not really feel that we have any direction in our lives? And you can be around what's considered the true religion. But those that are really in the true religion, they're on the move. They've been progressively led by an active, a forceful, and a dynamic leader. If you feel yourself just kind of wandering around, not really rooted and grounded, trying to wait on the new fad or the new thing that's coming in, Christ is not your leader. You may go into the, not, the guise of the name of Christianity and use God's name from time to time, but Christ is not your leader. He's not lost. He's given proper and active direction all the way through. Would you believe that some people will follow men before they follow Christ? It says it right here in the Bible what they should do, and they say, you know, I can't really make up my mind what I want to do, but don't let Oprah say it. <laughs> See where we are? <laughs> Jehovah said, with Jesus, I'm going to pray. So I'm going to remind you. And now as we live here in the last day, where do you really stand with these presidential elections? What are you really waiting on to kind of see just what takes place? What happens within your heart when you hear about these polls and certain individuals? Where are you at with all of this? Our leader is one, and it is the Christ. We're going to be showing up for what we are. Jehovah's going to let certain things take place in these last days. And we want to make sure that we are letting everybody know that in our hearts, Within our actions. Oh, well, I really only have one leader. And, and that's you. If we cooperate with the congregational direction that Jesus gives by means of the elders and others that take the lead, are we obedient to the channel that Christ used today? And incidentally, anyone here for the first time, your life depends on you coming in contact and working in harmony with the channel that your old God is using today. And that channel is referred to in the Bible as a faithful 
and discreet slave. We must come in contact with that slave. We must work in harmony with that slave. Christ is the master. He has appointed some individuals on this earth today to work in harmony with him, to serve him as a faithful slave. That means we have to be willing to follow the rest. Have you developed confidence in the elders that take the lead? Jehovah is using loyal men, not perfect men. Have you noticed that they are imperfect? Well, that's good. But tell us something we don't know. Jehovah is using loyal men, not perfect men. Due to the leadership of Jesus Christ, Jehovah can bless any decision imperfect men make, even if it's a bad man. But he never blesses disobedience. You got to get back in line? You got to show, okay, I'm following Jesus. So, where are we at with demonstrating that Jesus is our leader? Even when it comes to the elders, elders, uh, they're called upon to be examined. In fact, the Bible gives us license to look at the elders, contemplate their actions, and follow their example. Which means, then, that as elders, we must have the viewpoint of Jehovah God and Jesus. We must have the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ tells us, if we were to look around, and if we were going to find someone who is really spiritual, if someone who is really like Christ Jesus, how would we find him? How would we know who it is? It would be the person who's acting like Christ. That means it would be the most humble person that we could point out and say, now you see that brother there? Now that is a humble brother. Because Jesus told us, in his Father's eyes, the one who is the lesser one, is the one that is great. From Jehovah's standpoint. Now the whole world's not gonna tell you that. And that's why people are acting up. They don't want to be humble. They don't want to be viewed as the lesser one, even those that are charged to take the lead. You see, somebody can make a disciple out of you. Why are you acting that way? Why are you behaving that way? Did you think that the congregation didn't belong to Christ? You know, some elders will want to try and deal with the congregation as though it's a franchise. The Bible says our leader is one. We don't have different leaders. And some elders, they want to deal with the congregation like a franchise. Now, a franchise, you know, if you bought a McDonald's franchise, there's certain things you wouldn't have to do. It's all in the contract. Certain things you have to do. you got to have the archers up there. I did all the research on it. you going to have to have some kind of sign out there that said how many are being sold. And you have to sell their product. Oh, no, you have to sell their products. But now these little cups and things that they're showing and selling, you know that the commercials say, I participate in the But I participate in everything. Well, some other would be the congregation that way. They say, well, we don't have to do everything. Well, that don't really work here. You better be careful. You're out of line. You're out of bounds. You're not following the leader. So Christ controls every congregation. That means we want to behave in such a way that we know our leader is one and that's the problem. So in this time period in which we live, continue to follow Christ. We don't have an imperfect him. We're not following him. We should feel ourselves progressively on the move, heading to the new world. He gives us a fresh way of thinking, a fresh way of viewing things. We always remember we are not left in the hands of man. Let's turn back to the book of Exodus. Remember that angel we talked about? That was probably Jesus Christ. Look at the book of Exodus, chapter 14. Well, notice what the Bible tells us. In Exodus, chapter 14, look at verse 19 and verse 20. It tells us, then, the angel of the true God was going to heaven, the camp of Israel. And they departed and went to, the, and departed and went to their rear. And the pillar of cloud departed from their van and stood in their rear. Now look at verse 20. So it came in between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. On the one hand, it proved to be a cloud together with darkness. On the other hand, it kept lighting up the night. And this group did not come near to that group all night. What would the 
Bible is telling us is Jehovah has used Jesus already. He would guide and protect this nation by day. He would guide and protect them by night. And the one camp that is the Egyptian, the Egypt pictures of the world, it never came near to this camp. It never did any harm. The only way we're going to be protected, we have to follow Christ as our leader. He will guide us during the day. He will guide us during the night. He will guide us when we can see clearly. He will guide us when we feel that we're lost and we have nowhere to go. But he will always protect us. And this whole world, it gets dark out there. Sometimes we don't know where we're going. But the only way we're protected, we follow Jesus. We follow our needs. When we do that, remember that. He is the archangel. He's the leader over hundreds of millions of angels. Don't you think he can direct seven billion people on the earth today? But we must view his leadership as real. It must be a, rea a reality to us. And we can have confidence in this day and age that we can go into the new world under the leadership of Jesus Christ. All 307 of us would like to express our warm appreciation to you. Brother Mac could help us to appreciate that within our hearts, all of us want to follow Christ's leadership into the new world. Thank you very much.